Hello, and welcome to My Left Ear. I'm Carrie Freeman, and I'm your co-host, the writer, producer, director of My Left Ear. And sometimes Petey Freeman comes up here and joins us, and you will recognize him if he jumps up here. He's right now, he's in a very deep slumber, and I hate to bother him, uh, but I'll tell him you said hello if he doesn't come up. <clears throat> this channel is a liberal channel, and it is devoted to electing Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Uh, and it's called My Left Ear because I get a lot of psychic information through my left ear. It tells me things. It advises me. Uh, please, of course, like and subscribe. As you know, every YouTuber hounds you about this because it's very important. Uh, so we have seven days remaining, seven days remaining to vote. I voted already, dropped it in a drop box that I hope doesn't explode in fire. Uh, so here we are. Uh, I want to mention a couple of things. I have runes today. I want to mention something. I had afterthoughts after my last uh, video about three days ago, I'm not sure, uh, when I told the story about the missionaries, I, I got some uh, feedback on that. Um, some people sounded pretty horrified. Um, you know, at the, I want to just say a few things because I thought about it later. I thought about it later. And, uh, you know, those kids, and I call them kids because they were in their 20s, um, they didn't upset me. They kind of upset me later in the day. Isn't that weird? Uh, if I had one wish, when they sat down and they started this whole gr grooming thing on me, uh, <clears throat> I was actually kind of amused and I, kind of, I wanted to sort of play around with them a little bit, which I did, uh, left them kind of confused. They didn't know who they were dealing with. Uh, but there is something I wished that I didn't act on, which is, uh, a, a young man who was with them sat down and this guy really went off on quoting the Bible and explaining the Bible to me and all the ins and outs and Adam and Eve and sin and he went on and on and in retrospect I wished because I was finishing up eating and I wanted to go I wished I had said listen I want to give you a piece of advice um, I was, I was sitting here having a very peaceful breakfast and you sat down and you started um, imposing on my good breakfast by having questioning me, my faith, and having me answer a lot of questions. And I don't think that's the way to get people to listen to you. So I hope you think about that. Uh, but I didn't do it. Uh, but I'm uh, prepared if it happens again, although that was like the only time that kind of thing ever happened to me. And I really think it was the end of the conversation when I said, let me get this straight. In order to heal, and that would be for me or anybody, that you feel there's only one way. And they went, yes, there's only one way. And that was my takeaway because it helped me see the um, the zealous nature of this uh, Christianity movement uh, that's that's everywhere the zealousness so uh, that's what I wanted to share with you and then the other thing that I forgot that was really comical is that when I left that place the farmers market was tearing everything down um, it's on a street that they close up and there were trucks and people were loading all this stuff onto trucks. And there was a guy, big brawny guy, dark hair, loading trucks out in the open. People were sitting on the sidewalk having their coffee and their croissants and everything. And he started doing an imitation of Donald Trump loudly. And he did the hands and he had the voice. I mean, he was really, really good. And I got such a kick out of this guy. He was having a blast. And it was like he was an actor who was doing some improv. And you know what? He may have been an actor because he was very good at this invitation, even though he didn't look like Trump at all. So I stood there and I thought he was funny and people were amused. So I said, um, listen, 
I think you should just go eat a, ca a cat. And everybody burst out laughing. And then he and I had some repartee and I went on my way. It was very, it was fun. It kind of lifted the somewhat heaviness of being, um, you know, surrounded by the missionaries. <laughs> and it made me laugh. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, but the guy loading the truck was amusing a lot of people. Nobody got mad at him. He was funny. Uh, all right, we're gonna start with the good news. Been liking to start with some political good good news, and this is good for Kamala, um, not Kamala. Uh, Pennsylvania mail-in ballots uh, returned on or around yesterday, and they're registered by party. So here's the cool thing. The registered Democrats uh, were counted in as 849,000 registered. Now I have 849,000 comma 849. So I might have made a mistake, but it's 849,000 Democrats um, that registered and so it's and change. All right. Probably really close to 900,000 and Republicans 468,067. Huge difference. Huge, huge difference. So many more Democratic registration in Pennsylvania, important states. I want to share that with you. Um, I did not watch the, what I call the Nazi rally at Madison Square Garden. I knew that my health and my stomach could not possibly handle it. And as I reviewed it, I couldn't have handled it. But what I wanna say, and you all know now, you know me uh, pretty well, and some of you read my book, that, that my father was a full-time stand-up comic. That's how he made a living. That's how he put me through college. He never did a side gig. So that's what I grew up with. Um, a lot of funny, a lot of punchlines, uh, and also his fa his uh, friends and other performers that I was exposed to. But the rally opened with this terrible stand-up comic. I didn't even write his name down because I don't care. I think he just tanked his uh, career. Pretty young guy, I guess known for some, um, you know, nasty stand-up. But... He was so bad and he was so insulting about uh, Puerto Rico. It was horrible. It said terrible things about Puerto Rico, that it was like a garbage dump in the ocean. And I didn't write these down, so forgive me if I don't have it, you know, perfect. Um, and then all about how, Me I think, how Mexican women like to have children. They like to get pregnant and the Mexican men, um, really disgusting, like they don't pull out, uh, and then talked about how they're invading. It was really, everybody was just like, <gasps> who is that guy? But here's my comment. I thought, and I put it on Twitter yesterday, that what do you know? A terrible stand-up comic loses the election for Donald Trump via Puerto Rico because did that guy blow it. And then they put out a, a news, uh, some kind of a news thing that the stand-up does not represent uh, the Trump team or the beliefs of the Trump team. They were just trying to recover from it because um, the teleprompters there and everybody gets to see what his jokes are, you know? Uh, they knew what was coming. They hired him. So that was just, they just didn't like the blowback and it turned people off. And you know, the musician, um, he's so big. I, 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 I don't follow him, but he's so big. Bad Bunny, which I love that name that he gave himself. Bad Bunny is from Puerto Rico. And Bad Bunny has 45 million Instagram followers. That's a lot, right? <laughs> so that's just an example. Ricky Martin came out. Um, uh, 
Sunny Hostin from The View came out. She's from Puerto Rico. And so there's like this, and I guess there's a lot of people from Puerto Rico that are in some of the swing states. I think Pennsylvania, I didn't know that. Uh, anyway, a stand-up comic loses the election for Donald Trump. It's, it, it's kind of oversimplified, but I thought it was kind of funny. All right, now I'm gonna get to the runes. Um, I'm guessing that you heard, it's been uncovered that um, Elon Musk, who I have nicknamed Elmo Fudd, because do you remember Elmer Fudd from the um, Warner Brothers cartoons? Elmer Fudd, I loved Elmer Fudd growing up, but now I call Elon Musk Elmo Fudd. Do that for a reason on Twitter, because if they see uh, Elon Musk spelled out, they're gonna wanna see what I've said. So by not saying his name properly, they bypass uh, what I've said, little trick. You misspell things on purpose. Like if I wanted to say the F word on Twitter, I say P-H-U-C-K, and the algorithm doesn't find it. So that's a little thing. So Elmo Fudd. Will Elmo um, face charges for being in touch, regularly in touch with Putin? Because that's been uncovered now. He's had a lot of contact with Putin, and people are thinking, what the heck is he up to? Um, so I wanted to know because there's like, this is illegal, um, he's violating the Logan's Act and blah, blah, blah. I, so I want to know, is he going to face charges or an investigation? He's like the richest man, so we don't know. So here's what, here's what I got. I got the rune of separation. And uh, I think it's giving him some advice because it says, now is the time for separating old paths old skins must be shed um that would be that would be elmo fudd's lizard skin uh and outmoded relationships discarded meaning get rid of vlad um it's the rune of radical severance and severance is bye-bye you know like severance pay it's your last paycheck um where appealing away is called for um, and that person, meaning Elmo, must give up some aspect of his behavior. It's doubtful he's able to do that, I just want to say. Uh, the appropriate action here is for him to submit. I'm doubtful about that. But if there's enough at stake, you know, he may dial it down. He wants to get in and run things and make money and get all these, you know, military contracts and so on and so forth. Um, but his... His advice is to submit and retreat. Um, and also it says real property is associated with this rune. Um, and it says the benefits you receive might maybe derive from something you must give up. Uh, what are your attachments um, to your behavior, your cultural inheritance, your um, reputation, you know, all of that. So it says, look closely at what until now you have proudly claimed as your birthright. You know, the richest man in the world, um, space travel, you know, Tesla, all these things. Um, are you attached to pos the pos your position in society? Well, that's a resounding yes. <laughs> He's very attached. Um, but it says separation is called for here. It will free him. I don't think he's gonna do it, but it will free him, okay? So the next rune I got, which is interesting, when we talk about attachments, I got separation reversed. So I picked separation twice. As you know, that will happen. One was upright and one was in the reverse. So this one is the reverse. And it tells Elmo, this is not the time to be bound by old conditioning, old authority. It wants him to change, even though my left ear does not think he can. Um, but consider, Elmo, what will benefit you, but also what will benefit others. I don't think Elmo thinks about others. Um, total honesty is required as you may be called upon to undertake a radical departure. This one line 
tells me that he's, he's going to get into some trouble. He's not going to get to do everything he wants to do. He's going to get into some trouble. I definitely think they're looking at him and there's probably some investigation going on. I really, really do. Um, and, and there's a caution here at the end. Uh, through negligence or refusal to see clearly, he may cause pain to others and big damage to himself. Uh, and the last one with having to do with Elmo, it's opening, uh, which is normally good, but it's in reverse. And so it says to him, expect a darkening, Elmo, uh, of the light in some situation or relationship in your life. A friendship may be dying. You know, that could be Trump turns on him because, you know, Trump will turn on anybody at any time. Uh, a marriage he's not married, or even some aspect of yourself that is no longer appropriate to the person you are becoming. Uh, the, the opening reversed is like a death um, over a way of life that is no longer valid. And I'm not suggesting he's going to lose everything, but there's going to be some suffering there for Elon. Um, and in order to accept new opportunity, it's vital that Elmo face up to his, uh, all of this very consciously, very directly. Uh, giving up the old way gladly and living in a time with emptiness and no fear is really the key uh, to the new. If he took this advice, he might become illuminated in proper time, not likely. So all of this circuitive rune stuff to say, my left ear believes that uh, Elon is going to get a visit. Um, he's going to have to deal with the DOJ or the FBI or whatever. He can't just meet with Vladimir Putin. He has no basis for it other than treason. All right, now we come to the second, the second set of runes. And, um, you know, Kamala Harris is expected to speak at the Ellipse uh, in DC where Trump uh, whipped up the crowd. Uh, let's go down to the Capitol, I'll go with you. You know, you have to fight, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but she's going to the same place to, to deliver her sort of closing message which, honest to God, I, I just think that's brilliant campaign management. Unbelievable. Who thought of that? It's so creative. It's like she gets to stand up there and rewrite history. It's really brilliant, according to my left ear. <laughs> All right, so we got separation again. But I'm reading it in a slightly different way because of the question. Um, it is now the time of separating all paths, which means she be becomes the leader. Old skins must be shed, outmoded, relationships discarded. Um, this is a rune of radical severance. Well, when you go, you know, uh, oh, there's like, oh, they're blowing dirt everywhere. They just started blowing dirt. I think, I'm so sorry to do this. I'm gonna get up and like close the door. So maybe get a little less noise in here. Here I am closing the door. We don't like the leaf blowers. Not sure why we have leaf blowers, but we have leaf blowers. Thank you for your patience. Um, so radical acceptance, appealing away. Well, when you go from being a citizen to the White House, there is appealing away. There is a radical acceptance. You're not, these are peaty hairs that I'm feeling. I'm pulling off my face. Um, but it can bring the bounty of the universe to her uh, and him. Uh, and that they just need to uh, take appropriate action. Uh, so it, it is appealing away. It is radical acceptance, but in this, radical severance, severance. There's a book called Radical Acceptance. Um, and that's a good thing because it means they made their goal. There he is. Beanie, he heard me talking. Oh, Pete, so, so glad you joined us. You make yourself comfortable, sweetheart? Come on, sweetheart. 
lay down, make yourself comfortable. Everybody just loves to look at you because you're so handsome. He's so handsome, my boy. Okay. Um, we're back to separation. It speaks of new experiences coming to them, Kamala and Tim. Um, and just remember, it is considered the rune of acquisition. And so, you know, what just came through my ear is acquiring the Senate, acquiring the House, acquiring the White House. Um, we will see. Uh, but it's a powerful energy, okay? Um, and it and it's good. It's the rune of acquisition. They're acquiring power in the good sense of power, the good use of power, like the power to improve your life and my life. Um, and then again, it talks about the inheritance may be derived from something you must give up. Well, they're going to have to give up their privacy to do this to serve us, they have to give up their privacy um, and abandon some aspect of themselves, but it's a cultural inheritance. Uh, but it says that this separation material will free them. Now, the next, he has to show you his little butthole, doesn't he? I just don't know if he knows what he's doing. He probably doesn't. Um, but it's a cute little butthole, don't you think? Um, so interestingly, I'm, you know, I'm playing with the runes with my lap, getting all my energy on it, and a rune fell out while I was doing this particular reading, and it was the rune of joy. It fell into my lap, and I went, damn, that's great. It's the rune of joy and light, the rune of joy and light. And I'm just going to go back to... Um, the, the question that I posed um, of what's going on with the ellipse, you know, so th this is, this is about the ellipse, the joy. And that's what I pictured. She gets up there and she is ready. I mean, for the last all summer, when have we ever seen Kamala Harris not ready? She's ready for everything. She's ready for the unexpected question. She's ready. So this, this joy is just perfect. Um, it's a fruit bearing branch. It speaks of happiness. So she's really happy in this position. Things are coming together. It's a culmination of learning and growth. Um, it's a positive res result that brings joy into the heart. Um, and it is emblematic of new clarity and understanding regarding their current situation. Um, and it says, I highlighted this, uh, this rune of joy tells you, tells them, her, that you have the presence and connection with your inner self and you are able to do whatever it is you choose. Uh, so it advises Tim and Kamala, incorporate all the learnings that you have on the way, including this summer uh, and this campaign. You are ready, Tim and Kamala, Kamala and Tim. You are ready to open your uh, arms and your emotions to the joy. So we're gonna see a lot of joy uh, and it also, this is really great, it indicates a happiness in the business world. Uh, makes me think that bills will be passed. Uh, things will get accomplished and rewards will be received. All right, so I think this is our let my last rune question. And I just wrote, describe the consequences of a Harris walls win and I got breakthrough um, signals a major shift or breakthrough in the process of self change a complete transformation um, and for some for them uh, it's living 
it's so radical that they are no longer able to live life in the ordinary way. And they must have radical trust in regard to this new way of life, these new positions. Uh, this is the bright warmth of the sun as it breaks through the final barriers because Trump can, well, he's very old, but he cannot run again, okay? He'll fight, they'll fight, but he cannot run again. So breaking the final barriers, and it does speak of prosperity, which I think has to do with the economy. Um, and it is, it's so interesting, akin to being released from a quagmire. And the quagmire is the energy of Donald Trump, MAGA's, and the hard right movement. Listen, I know that's not gonna happen, you know, like instantly, no. But a huge, huge beginning, okay? Being released from the quagmire is gonna take a little time. And I just wanted to add that. But being released of certain energy is gonna propel them forward. Where are you going, Beatty? Come here. What are you doing, boy? We must see something that's interesting to him. Um, also, lastly, uh, this has to do with um, the light of day and that the light of day pierces the darkness. Um, and it's a little bit like the Latin phrase carpe diem, sees the day. And that's how this energy should be perceived. Um, you know, not surprisingly, they got the blank rune because the blank rune says blank is the end and blank is the beginning. It's perfect, right? It's the end of the campaign. It's the beginning of their uh, presidency and vice presidency. It's a rune. Come here, Pete. Don't get into trouble, okay? Come here. Um, it's a total trust and should be taken as exciting evidence of their true destiny. And they are destined. You know, they are destined. Let me see if I get peek in the picture a little bit more. Oh, he's looking way down. Okay, a little bit difficult. That's right. Look in the, look in the camera, Pete. Um, it, it portends a symbolic death. And I think it's the beginning of the death of the MAGA movement, the far right. But like I said, not right away, not fast, but it's the beginning, which is what we have to start with. But in this blankness is undiluted potential, getting to move forward. And there are forces that are unseen in the background. I like that a lot. And finally, uh, the blank rune represents the fertility of the emptiness, which you can fill up, which they can fill up with the bounty. Um, and it does represent the highest possibilities of the human endeavor. Very possible, very positive, isn't it? Uh, and then lastly, defense, because there's going to be a big fight. There's going to be a big fight. It's not going to be easy. Uh, as we are tested, we fund the power to avert blockage and defeat. Um, that's the defense rune, the last one. Um, and if there appears to be an obstacle in their path, that even a delay may prove beneficial. Now, that is interesting because a delay could be counting votes, all the resistance that comes through MAGA Mike, the House, and Trump, et cetera, et cetera. But it's saying it may be beneficial. It may backfire on them. And the fact that I said that, I think there's a pretty good chance. Uh, so a delay, which people will moan and groan about, may prove beneficial. Patience is needed. And... You know, realistically, the rune of defense speaks to the difficulties that arise at the beginning of new life. And so this new regime um, with so many new appointments, oh my God, I wonder who her chief of staff is gonna be. Uh, it may offer a time of waiting, a little bit of waiting. Uh, the voting, the conflicts, 
um, waiting for the spring of water to fill up and to anticipate uh, difficulties. And they're working on it right now. They're working on all these eventualities right now. Because this is a very, Kamala Harris has really a smart team. And that bodes for her presidency, that she could assemble such a great team in such a small, short period of time is part of the genius, her genius. Um, but it does speak of being able to capitalize on what they have developed so far. Uh, and uh, they're just gonna start preparing for the future and preparing uh, to till the soil uh, to receive the, the seeds. Uh, so through some inconvenience and discomfort, growth is promoted. So I just wanna say some really good outcomes, but not easy. <laughs> so just hold a good thought and, and understand that there is discomfort um, involved in this growth and promotion. All right, now we're at the end here. Good evidence. So I've been saying, a lot of my friends ask me, and they ask me over and over again, well, what do you think? What do you think? I said, well, what did I say last week? I'm not I'm not deviating from what I think. I've thought this for a long time. I've thought this for six years. Um, I say over and over to my friends, and I probably have said it on some of these videos, it's her time. I've said it over and over, and I've said it to my friends. I said, follow the energy. It's her time. It's clear. It's history. So the other night, I'm having a really bad night sleeping. I don't know why. And I finally like give up and I wake up and I turn the TV on, middle of the night, 3 a.m. And it just automatically pulls up a reader, a, a successful reader, YouTube reader, who's a medium and psychic and blah, 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 and doing all the political stuff. Uh, strikes me as a very intelligent woman. And just as it comes up, she's talking about Kamala Harris and this reader at three in the morning says to the camera, it's her time. And she repeats it. And I went, okay, okay, that's good evidence. That's a synchronicity. Uh, I call a synchro. I was meant to hear that. It was confirmation. And um, it came to me at 3 a.m. from a YouTube reader. It's her time. That's my belief. That's my left ear. It's her time. Um, so this is one, a small little thing, but this is good evidence. Small. The other morning I got up and I was, I was inspired to put myself together to look really nice before I went out to run errands. I just wanted to look nice. So I put myself together and um, I did errands and I went to one of my favorite markets, Vallarta. Uh, it's like a Hispanic market and I love their uh, fruits and vegetables. I love their, um, I apologize to any vegetarians out there, but I love their roasted chickens. And so I went there and I was in the refrigerated section looking at cheeses and I realized, oh, there's a woman who wants to get in and look at the door that I'm looking at. So I pulled back and go, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I made room for her and she's, uh, oh, I don't know. She's maybe 40 years old. She's looks like a mom. Turns out she was a mom. She is a mom. And um, she said, oh, thank you. And out of her mouth came, you look so pretty today as if she knows me. And I went, it took me back because this was my thought getting ready in the morning. I just want to look really nice today. And I'm just shocking that the universe channeled this through this woman. Like, you do look nice today, Carrie. And then I thought, who is she channeling? I think maybe she was channeling my mother, but I'm not sure. It was just the universe heard me. And then she and I went off on talking and we did not talk politics. We just talked her being a mom, aging, uh, food, all kinds of stuff. We made little friendship and she was 
delightful lady. But you look so pretty today was as if she knew me because, well, she has she seen me on other days? Uh, you know, anyway, it was, it was a lovely moment. Um, all right, now we're on to quotes. And I have a few. Um, this is by the Dalai Lama. If a problem can be solved, there is no use worrying about it. If it can't be solved, worrying will do no good. <laughs> Love that Dalai Lama. If worrying about it will do no good. All right. Then the next one is George Orwell, who wrote 1984. The party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. It was their final, most essential command. And I doubt that the novel 1984 has the word gaslighting in it. But this was George Orwell's um, quote, pretty, pretty timely. And then, um, Elena, one of one of um, the subscribers that is always helping me and informing me, uh, because last week I did not know Sun Tzu, T Z U, um, but I had his quote: "An evil man will burn his own nation to the ground to rule over the ashes," which of course sounds like Donald Trump. But so uh, Elena wrote me and said that's the art of war. Sun Tzu wrote The Art of War, one of the most famous books of all time. Well, this really resonated with me because one of my favorite top like five books of all time is called The War of Art. The War of Art. It's a takeoff on The Art of War. And it's by a man named Stephen Pressfield. Um, and this book is just genius. It, it's really meant for anybody that has resistance to, write, to writing or doing their art or facing that dream. But now he's really talking about writing. And um, I, you probably can't see this, but that's one chapter right there. Those five sentences or four sentences, one chapter. That's why I think this book is brilliant because it removes resistance to even reading it because he made it so easy to read. But here's what I love, because this is what writers face. And this is what he says, is the chapter's called What I Know. And these are his words. There's a secret that real writers know that wannabe writers don't. And the secret is this. It's not the writing part that's hard. What's hard is sitting down to write. What keeps us from sitting down is resistance. This book is brilliant. It's called The War of Art. In fact, there's a reader, oh my God, what's his name? It's, it's, the Something Pond. He's really well known. The Something Pond. I can't. You probably already know who he is. This is, he talks about this book. It's like, it's, it's his favorite book. So um, it's, it's wildly good. All right, my friends, that's the long and wordy reading today. Uh, let's just support Kamala in her amazing speech. I know she's prepared. Um, the thing about Kamala Harris is that she is enjoying what she's doing. And she's working harder, except for maybe Tim Walls, than anybody on the planet right now. And she's loving it. Uh, that's the joy that she brings. So I uh, want to support her, and I believe she's going to have a fabulous uh, speech on the ellipse uh, that's going to be inspiring and, and um She's gonna, she's gonna win. And then we have to be prepared for the uh, defense, the war, the problems, the blah, 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 that is gonna ensue. But Joe Biden's in the White House and nobody can get him out <laughs> unless he wants to leave. So hold on to that good thought. 
And um, as I like to say sometimes, make a peace, make good memories, hold the high thought, and don't listen to a lot of news because it's so intense right now. And there's a lot of propaganda, even more. And um, there are polls that are completely inaccurate. Uh, so, you know, cut yourself a break. If you voted, that was your, that, you know, if you voted, if you wrote out postcards, then you did, you did great. And now we just keep the faith. And it's like uh, that quote that I like, um, have faith and pursue the unknown end. And that was by Oliver Wendell Holmes. Have faith and pursue the unknown end. And that's what we're supposed to do right now. We're supposed to have faith. All right. I'm, I'm, let's see if I can catch Pete for you. He found his comfortable position. And we can't see his face. But we can see his um, hulking body. I'll see you soon. I have an idea for a Patreon. And I'm going to do that in a few days. And we, we're, we're close. <laughs> we're so close. Uh, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Okay, talk to you soon.